Hi, how's it going? Hello everyone. The Shure SM7B is a very popular microphone, and for good reason. It's a great microphone. But I think some of the popularity may just come from, well, its popularity. People see it being used, it gets more popular, and so yet more people see it being used, and so on. With the SM7B being used by so many famous podcasters and YouTubers, it's easy to see it as the king of microphones, or at least the king of Shure microphones. But popularity aside, I have to ask, is it really the king? One possible challenger is this microphone right here. This is the Shure SM81. It's just about as different as a microphone can get from the SM7B. It's a small diaphragm condenser microphone. So, it seems absurd to consider it as a challenger to the SM7B. And, well, that's a good point. One is a broadcast dynamic microphone, and the other is a pencil condenser that seems to be most often used as an instrument microphone. So, it's a silly comparison. Or is it? Okay, a little. But let's do it anyway. These microphones are the same price, and they're both made by Shure. You might expect that to be where the similarities end, but let's dig in and find out how they compare. I'm now recording with both microphones, and I'll be switching back and forth between the two. It might look like the SM81 is further away, but I've tried to get the actual capsules the same distance away, and the capsule in the SM81 is right at the end of the mic, while the SM7B has the capsule set back an inch or two. The mics are currently just a couple inches away from my mouth, and I feel this is the distance where the SM7B shines. The SM7B actually has a bit of a natural roll-off in the low end, and by natural I just mean intrinsic to the design and not a result of the switchable high-pass filter. It has one of those as well, and I'll talk about it soon. The low-end roll-off on the SM7B means that when you are this close to the mic, the proximity effect doesn't get too overwhelming. The SM81, on the other hand, has a much boomier proximity effect, and you can really get that deep announcer voice if you want it, but if you don't, you can use one of the selectable high-pass filters on the SM81 to tame it down a bit. Now I have the high-pass filters on both microphones turned on. Since the SM7B already has some low-end roll-off, I don't think you really need the high-pass filter, even when you are really close to the mic, unless you're trying to reduce the effect of rumble or plosives, or if you just really do want to uh, tone down the proximity effect. On the SM81, you can get that really boomy sound if you want, but for me, if I was going to be this close to the microphone, I'd want to use one of the high-pass filters to get a slightly more natural sound, though the SM81 is still a bit bassy at this distance. The SM81 is also more susceptible to plosives than the SM7B. With a pop filter and some care, it's totally usable, even this close, but it's very sensitive to puffs of air being sent to the capsule. The SM7B isn't immune from plosives, you can definitely pop it if you aren't careful, but it's not nearly as sensitive to plosives as the SM81, especially when you're using the included foam windscreen, even this you know thinner one, although it does come with a much thicker one. So if you want to put the microphone this close to your mouth, the SM7B is a tiny bit more convenient. But with all the talk of boomy sound and plosives, why would you want to get this close to the microphone? Let's talk a bit about isolation. I think one of the reasons the SM7B has a reputation for good isolation is the fact that its famously low sensitivity encourages people to get right up on it. Granted, it does reject off-axis sounds very well, but so does the SM81. In fact, I'd say the SM81 is just as good in that regard as the SM7B. And getting closer to any microphone is going to increase the signal-to-noise ratio and is one of the best ways to isolate from background noise and even room reverb to an extent. I actually made a video a long time ago with the SM7B about that very topic. I'll put a link in the description to that video, as well as a silly video I made about that topic. But as for these two microphones, here's a quick sample in my garage to show how well each microphone does in a poor recording space. Now I'm in my garage, which is surely the worst recording space in my house. I even have a small fan running sort of behind and off to the side. I'm about six inches from the microphones, so not super far back, but I'm not right up on top of them either. As before, I have the gain adjusted to give similar levels from each microphone, and in this incredibly reverberant space with the fan running behind the microphones, is there a significant difference in how, well, one isolates from the room in comparison to another? This is just about the worst case scenario, so how do they compare? And just to show how much difference even a slight reduction in distance can make, 
I'm now three to four inches away from the microphones and I've adjusted the gain down slightly. In this terrible recording space, how much difference does simply getting a couple inches closer to the microphones make? They both isolate from ambient sounds well, and they both work up close, but the SM7B is arguably easier to use up close due to the low end roll off and pop resistance. But now I'm currently at a more comfortable seven inches or so from the microphones. I have the high pass filter turned off on both microphones. And at this distance, it's clear that the SM7B is rolling off the low end. The SM81 sounds slightly more full and warm than the SM7B. Granted, every voice is different and everyone has their preferences. If you prefer a bit less low end, you do have the option of the high pass filters, but if you prefer having a bit more low end, it never seems as natural when you try to add it in post. And while there are advantages to being super close to the microphone, six to eight inches is a much more comfortable distance. You can make small movements or head turns without causing drastic changes in tone and volume. It doesn't take quite as much care to prevent popping the microphones and it can sometimes just be nice to not have a mic right in your face. And at this distance, the SM81 has a more full sound if you want it, and high pass filters if you don't. Another advantage of the SM81 is already demonstrable at this distance, but I'll point it out when it becomes much more apparent in a moment. Now I moved back and I have the microphones about 12 inches from my mouth. That might seem a little extreme, but there are times when being able to push the microphone back this far can be really convenient. In a poor recording space, you are going to pick up more reverb and ambient sounds, but maybe you're on video and you don't want the mic right in your face. Or maybe you're recording while working at a desk and you don't want the microphone in your way. Whatever the reason, if you do have instances where you want the microphone a bit further away, I think the SM81 is the better choice. At 12 inches, the SM81 still maintains more low end and sounds more full than the SM7B. And one particular trait of the SM7B is starting to become a more noticeable issue, the low sensitivity. Even with a high quality interface with lots of clean gain, the low output of the SM7B means that the further away you get, the closer your output from the microphone is going to be to the noise floor of your recording gear. Now, I don't actually have the gain on my recorder currently maxed out, and the output of the SM81 isn't particularly high for a condenser microphone, but it's way more sensitive than the SM7B. I currently have the gain set 15 dB lower on the SM81 than I do on the SM7B, and I'm getting almost identical levels. And now I'll provide a few moments of silence from each microphone so you can better compare the difference. And don't get me wrong, the SM7B is still usable in this situation, and this is just my normal speaking volume. I could speak up and try to project my voice a bit to improve the signal to noise ratio, or, you know, there's tons of options for removing noise in post. But the SM81 does have a noise floor advantage, even at six inches or so from the microphone. A cloud lifter or similar device wouldn't help unless it had a lower noise floor than the interface you're using, and currently in my case, it doesn't. Ultimately, there is no perfect microphone, and I'm not trying to talk you into the SM81. In fact, there's a good chance that neither of these microphones would be the best option for you. That's actually my main point here. There are a ton of options these days at all price levels, and you can get good results out of most of them. But don't feel like you have to get the SM7B or any other popular microphone. There is no best microphone. Everyone's needs and preferences are going to be slightly different. Even a difference as small as wanting the microphone 8 inches away instead of 2 could make a difference in what you choose. Speaking of which, I find that I prefer to have the mic around 8 inches or so away when I'm making videos at this desk. This gets the microphone out of my way and leaves more room to work on and show whatever it is I'm dealing with on the desk. And at that distance, the SM81 has a more full sound and a lower noise floor. So for me, in my specific use case, the SM81 beats the SM7B. In the end, whatever you choose, whether it's one of these microphones or something completely different, hopefully this video at least gives you some extra info so that you can better make the best decision for you. If you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching. Take care.